Well, good morning. Um, first off, just want to say thanks for coming. It always amazes me. It seems like we get more people in here each and every year, so I appreciate you guys uh, coming out and covering our guys and just our program, and it means a lot to me, obviously, being uh, alumni here. It, it's really special to see the uh, exposure we get and just the, the media presence, so thank you guys for that. Uh, to start with, uh, you know, it's exciting. You know, we get to start full team practice on Friday. We got our banquet on Saturday. You know, you really have about three weeks to, to play one another and get ready for our first game. So our guys are fired up. Um, they've done a really good job. Uh, this has been as good of a team as far as showing up and going about their business the right way. Um, it, it's been really refreshing as a head coach when – your assistant coaches and your players, man, they're just showing up each and every day with a ton of intent and energy and executing what we ever throw at them. And it's been really nice to see. So uh, I'll open up for questions. Um, ready for the hard ones, I guess. I go. Well, I woke up this morning and I said, well, I don't think there's been a publication that has ranked this preseason in the top ten. So that's been our Achilles heel in 2017, I think, last year. I'm just kidding. I don't buy into that stuff. But last year there was just a lot of distractions, man, to be honest with you. And, and everybody, I'm sure, wants to point to you know, us lo losing one of our best players. But there was a lot of distractions behind the scenes you guys didn't see and uh, a lot of drama to be quite honest with you, and it was a lot to manage. I thought our guys, once they decided to play as one unit, did a really good job, and that was the, the fun part. You know, the 20-game winning streak, you know, a lot of people will call and say, hey, what, what did you say to them? And I said, I didn't say anything to them. I just got step, stepped back and got out of the way and let them play baseball, and, and that was really fun to be a part of. Well, I've had to be more hands off with my knee and stuff. So uh, that's been fun to watch our leaders take over and our assistant coaches. They've been tremendous. Uh, AK and Coach Palumbo and Colby and Blake and Heath. Uh, so they've done a really good job. Has any of the younger guys maybe stepped in this, that leadership role from a player side after having some, some losses? <clears throat> Charlie Hodges did a really good last year behind the scenes. You know, a lot of people didn't see him because he was hurt with Tommy John surgery, but he was pretty much our pitching coach uh, in the bullpen. He's done a really good job. And, and then you've got the older guys. When you, when you have guys like Carter Spivey, Garrett Saylor, Lane Hoover, guys have been in your program five years, uh, AMAC, uh, Carter Cunningham's done a really good job. It's been really, like I said, is we put stuff down on paper and they go about their business like their coaches. They hold one another accountable. And really this day and age, that, that's unheard of because there's so much selfishness out there and what what is it in for me and how much NIL money am I going to get and you know coach yelled at me yesterday so that that's been the real refreshing part about this team is they've just shown up and gone about their business uh, I, I don't I'm sure they've seen the rankings but nothing has changed since rankings have come out with the way they've approached their day to day so uh, once again that's really refreshing as a head coach last year late in the season Um, I think it was a collective unit last year. Uh, you know, uh, Ben Newton really took uh, upon himself to kind of go over game notes each and every day before we would play a game, and, and Coach Manor helped out with that. Uh, I, I think this group has taken uh, really a – you know, it's every team's different, and they've taken on their own mantra, uh, and, and that's the thing that even back to the fall, you know, they got a three six two team GPA, and they just showed up and competed every day at practice. So that was good to see. Cliff, you talked about drama and distractions. I know you've also the team and you personally have dealt with some real trials, life and death type situations. How does you know, kind of going through those types of things? What does that do for a team? And well, seeing Parker Bird come to the facility and just, uh, you know, with a smile on his face and him being at practice when he can, when he doesn't have PT and stuff, I mean, if that doesn't, you know, put things into perspective, then I don't know if you've got a pulse. So that's been, you know, awesome. I mean, he makes me better. He makes our team better. Um, obviously, it was a very tragic moment, 
but I tell you what, of, of all the people it could ever happen to, he's taken and ran in a very positive way. And he's not just affecting our team, he's affecting people all around the country in a positive way. Well, uh, we had a recruit on campus, and uh, you know, of course, I, I don't answer my phone with the recruit, but we're finishing up. I had just finished up offering him a scholarship, and uh, my phone just kept ringing in my watch, and I looked down, and it's Jeff Bird. It was on a Saturday, and I knew once, like the third time he was calling, that it wasn't good. So I, I just told the recruit and his parents I had to step away, and Jeff obviously was in a panic and said, hey, I need you to get over to the emergency room. So I dropped whatever I was doing and got my car and, and I actually beat Parker there to the emergency room. I, I never could see Parker, um, but I was there. Um, and then the guys that were on the boat and his girlfriend showed up. So I got a chance to spend some time with them until Jeff and, and Mitzi and the rest of the family showed up. Uh, no, no timetable. I think that's something that is tough to put a timetable on. The thing that Jeff and I talked about originally was to make him part-time. So he was a part-time student in the fall. He'll be a part-time student in the spring. So his clock doesn't start uh, for his eligibility. Um, you know, he just got his prosthetic uh, right before Christmas. What a great Christmas present. And it's not something, and probably I was a little bit naive, it's not something that, hey, when you get a prosthetic, you just put it on and, man, you're going. Um, you know, you got to get that area uh, toughened where you can uh, have the prosthetic on. you got to get those quad muscles strong. So it was a process for him to be able to wear it for the entire day. And then I think once he continues to, you know, get that leg strong, I think you probably even get into a probably more dynamic prosthetic. And so all that's a process. But I wouldn't bet against him. I tell people all the time, you know, people say, hey, is he going to bet? I wouldn't bet against him. I just see the way he works and the attitude he has. I look at Carter Cunningham. I think Carter, you know, came in last year and probably put a lot of pressure on himself. On himself, he was really good friends with Zach Agnos. He was kind of in Zach's shadow a little bit. Uh, this year, he's taken a very professional approach about the way he goes about his business and just trying to be the best version of himself. He's been a really good leader. Um, he's kind of taken Dixon Williams under his wing because they both hit left-handed. He's just been another assistant coach on the field. Um, you know, Hoof is Hoof. Uh, JC, we're still trying to get him to take on more leadership roles. Uh, Ryan McChrystal and Justin Wilcoxon, I think, have made big jumps as far as being two elite catchers behind the plate. And pitching wise, Charlie Hodges, he's the wild card for me because he's probably 14, 15 months out of Tommy John. In the fall, he pitched a little bit at the back end. But when it was about a year out, you just your command's not as good and we're worried about your arm health. But now he's really coming. I think the sophomore class of pitchers that were freshmen last year, all of those guys have made big jumps. You look at Jake Hunter, uh, Eric Ritchie, Merrick Beaker. Uh, I really don't count Trey Savage in that group because he pitched a lot for us. But even him, he's made big jumps um, into the standpoint that, you know, you possibly could see him as a starter. So. That's the one thing about our program, and I give all the credit to our assistant coaches, is they develop guys that are in a program. If the guys are willing to work and stick it out, then they get better. And Coach Knight's done a great job with the pitchers. Coach Palumbo and Coach Bortles have done a great job with position players to develop those guys to um, you know, really allow their talents to come to the top. Would you like to see maybe more of an established starting, like starting pitching rotation versus kind of the plug and play where you guys did a lot last year? Coach Knight, yeah, we, we will, uh, we'll get a little more sleep this year, I think, because uh, our pitching depth's a lot better. You know, that, that's not something, and, and Coach Knight would tell you this, I tell you this, I'm a traditionalist. I don't like having openers, but last year we had to do what was necessary to give our team a chance to win. And I think, um, not to give myself credit is, but we just talked to the pitchers last year about everybody being a closer. And if you can just go out there and throw one inning, then we'll give the ball to somebody else. And it allowed our guys to have confidence and really 
uh, a selfless attitude and they didn't really care when they pitched. They knew that a lot of them, if they were healthy, they were going to have a chance to, to go out there and pitch. So, but yes, I mean, in a, in a perfect world, you'd like to put out a Friday, Saturday, Sunday starting rotation. Cliff, you mentioned earlier about your knee. Um, how did off-season knee surgery go for you? How are you feeling right now? And will you be able to be out there at third base as the season approaches here? Well, and uh, less of my tackles me, I think I'll be in good shape to coach third base. Uh, yeah, it was a grind. Um, Got my pick line out today, so I actually can bend my arm a little bit better and take a shower while getting saran wrap around my arm, so that's pretty cool. Um, but no, my knee's actually feeling good. It's just the antibiotics make me feel like crap. I can only imagine what the message board's questions about shortstop are. Uh, we'll have uh, a very quality guy that runs out there, but you might see multiple faces. Um, you know, Joey Barini really in the you know first few weeks we've been back has done a great job. Uh, he's playing with a lot more confidence. Um, Coach Palumbo's done a great job with him, uh, continuing to get him better defensively. Uh, Connor Rasmussen. Same thing, him and Nate Chrisman both have continued to develop as freshmen with Coach Palumbo and, and look a lot better. Um, and AMAC could go over there. I mean, Dixon Williams has done a good job at third third base. Uh, AMAC's one of the best defenders in the country, I would say, at third base, but he also can play shortstop. So you could see a lot of different guys, and, and those guys need to just be the best versions of themselves because they all kind of bring a little bit something else to the table. Um, they're all different in, in their own way. Uh, for JC just to be himself, you know, I told him if he put up the same offensive production as he did last year, that's enough, but continue to take more leadership roles. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll probably see him starting in center field to start off with just because of his personality, his vocalness in center field. Um, he's a long strider, so he'll probably play a little more shallow than you've seen center fielders play in the past because he really goes back on the ball really well and he's got a plus arm. But just to be himself and not try to, you know, be unbelievable, just keep coming every day and, and trying to get a little bit better. I think that's the biggest thing. I think when they try to do too much, a lot of times it can kind of snowball on them for sure. Is his personality kind of, I don't know what the word is, but just in the game where a lot of it is failure. I mean, he just seems so upbeat. You know, that kind of helps him out. <laughs> He's a very unique individual in a positive way. Um, I, I don't know if I've met anyone like Jacob Jenkins Cowart. Uh, he puts a smile on my face. He's an energy giver. Uh, he makes our team better, even if he's not doing anything at the plate offensively. He is a fiery, emotional guy, which I, I like. I mean, I like guys that mean something to him, and it means something to him. And um, so it, it's, it's fun to be around. Well, I, w I was more worried about him. You know, everybody would call me and ask me when Burley was getting qu called up. So when I would talk to him, I said, well, I can only imagine what people are asking you. If they ask me, that's the first question they ask me. And just keeping them in a positive mindset and, hey, you're doing what you need to do. It's a business. They'll call you up when they want to call you up. And you can't get frustrated when other guys are getting called up. But being able to fly the staff out there and being on the field for BP, um, thank Mike Schilt for that. He got us BP passes. I, I didn't want to ask Burley for BP passes. He'd only been up for like three days. So we just asked for tickets from Burley and then BP, BP passes from Mike Shield and to spend some time with him. It was a very quick trip, but we got to hang out with him on the field for BP and then hung out with him for about 15, 20 minutes after the game. And, uh, you know, he didn't get to play, but it was just awesome to see him in that Cardinals uniform and, and know how much, uh, you know, he meant to ECU baseball. Yeah. Clip. Hey, hey, man, good to see you, brother. Great to be here. Uh, guys getting close to maybe getting that call up, but to have a guy hit the home run in Major League Baseball, like how big of a recruiting pitch, but how interested are kids in seeing stuff like that with To be honest with you, I got no idea what kids are interested in anymore. <laughs> what makes them make decisions, uh, what makes parents help them make decisions or not uh, help them make decisions, but it can't hurt. 
and for him to do it after Pujols' 700th was, was pretty awesome from my standpoint. So, um, you know, our guys have gone out there and done a good job. You know, it's great to see Gavin do what he's doing and Norby doing what he's doing. And I just want those guys to keep putting their head down and go to work and so we can see them up in the big leagues very shortly as well. Carter's five, he's gotten some buzz, and obviously he's kind of a leader on your pitching staff. How is he leaning into that? Spivey's just gone about his business as he did last year, you know, when nobody really expected anything of him. And we, we all know how that turned out. And um, he's been through a lot of adversity here. Nobody will remember it, especially after last year. But for him to, you know, come back and, and really want to be a part of our team when he could have went somewhere else, that means the world to me. And uh, our teammates see that, and they respect him for that. And he's uh, continued to get better with Coach Knight. So definitely – you know, he'll have the opportunity to, you know, pitch on Friday nights for us. Uh, there's still a few weekends here to see that competition unfold. But um, just having a guy that's a fifth-year senior that has been out there in pretty much every situation you can imagine um, and had success and then also had not success early in his career. So uh, that gives us a comfort level. Is there a guy you're kind of hoping steps into, like, what – Bryson Worrell did for you in the lineup last year? I mean, he couldn't not hit most of the time. Well, Bryson, the last month, I mean, you guys saw it. That That's as special of a month that I've seen here at East Carolina. I mean, he, you know, carried us a lot offensively for sure. You know, going into last year, uh, we talked to the hitters, and I think our offensive lineup will be very similar this year. You know, there'll be a lot of guys that can hit 5 to 10. We never expected somebody to hit 20 last year, but we felt like there were some guys that hit 5 to 10 and some double-digit guys. And um, I feel like our offense will do the same this year. We'll have some guys that can run, some guys that will hit doubles, and then some guys that hit home runs as well. Coach, you had a lot of lefty hitters last year. You'll probably have that again this year. You look at maybe some of the younger right-handed guys that's coming to the program as maybe somebody that can help balance that a little bit as you go on? I don't know if we're going to be very balanced offensively. We're going to have a lot of left-handed hitters. We'll have more left-handed hitters this year in the lineup than we did last year, uh, at least initially, I feel like. Um, Amax actually dealing with a, a little bit of a wrist injury that doesn't allow him to hit right-handed right now, so that puts it even more left-handed dominant. Um, but he's good to hit left-handed. He's good to throw. He's good to take ground balls, so that's a positive of it. We just got to see how that wrist uh, reacts as we continue to get closer to the season. But we'll definitely be left-handed dominant. Riley's 100% healthy. Um, you know, that was the one thing that in the middle of the season, uh, I, I just didn't think it was fair to him um, to be a pinch runner and to play defense for us last year when he couldn't swing the bat at the level uh, that he's capable of. So we got a medical red shirt for him last year, which he could have helped us. But like I said, I didn't think it was fair to him. He's 100% healthy. He's actually had a really good preseason. Uh, Luke Nowak, who you saw a little bit in pinch running situations last year. He actually had the same surgery uh, as soon as summer baseball was over that Riley did, and, and he's 100%. So uh, another guy, I mean, he's probably our fastest guy, I mean, from home to first. I mean, he runs four flats uh, down the line, Nowak does. So that gives us another speed option as well. So excited to have both those guys healthy. Any transfer portal guys that are going to make an impact right away, Coach? Uh, you know, Childress is still uh, kind of up in the air. He's still bat battling some arm stuff. Uh, Tyler Brock from VMI has looked really good, and Willie Lumpkin from Winthrop has looked really, really good. The, the thing that has been the most important thing to me is that they've really fit in well with our guys and have really bought into our culture. Uh, the portal will not be somewhere that we live. Uh, we'll you know, pick up a piece here and there if we need to in a situation where the draft hurt us a little bit last year. Um, and those guys have done a tremendous job. Coach, y'all been pushing, obviously, the third base, you know, kind of left field expansion a while. How, what type of progress have y'all made? And then once y'all get that done, how much will that add to your program? Well, nobody lets me know the financial stuff. You know, I, I feel like I should know since the money I donated. So, Ryan Robinson needs to give me an update. So. Uh, he's not in here, but I guess he'll see this. So uh, I think it's going really well. We've had a lot of people step up big. I think the banquet will help, um, you know, getting in front of people once again. And I think baseball season will help. I know that we're really close to being sold out again season ticket-wise. 
Um, so that's exciting. I appreciate everybody who has bought a season ticket. Uh, hosting regionals and super regionals definitely doesn't hurt that because everybody wants to have a seat if we're able to host a regional or super regional again. So that's exciting. But just to appreciate the passion that the Pirate fans have for us. How do you see the conference as a whole? Are they going to be more competitive than normal? What does this year kind of look like from what you see? I think this day and age is, is tougher to tell what other guys are going to have because of the portal and, you know, people transferring. And you guys know me. I know it's boring for you guys, but I have no idea. I don't care. Um, I have no idea how good George Washington is. And um, I know they'll have some good pitching because everybody does. And if we don't play well, we'll get beat. And if we play well, we'll have a good chance to win. I mean, everybody saw that last year with Bryant. So nobody even had heard of Bryant, really. And, uh, you know, they swept us here at home. And we were preseason top 10. So it's all about us. I mean, that's the way I look at it. And that's the way our guys look at it. Well, the biggest thing, Clip, is no props, no celebratory props. So we can't uh, go put a traffic cone out on the field. No you can do it. Hey, no sledgehammer. You got, you got to do it in the dugout. So I, I got to talk to our guys about that. So, uh, you know, that back in the day they had a little party room. When guys hit home run, they'd shut that door in the mud room. So they might have to go back to doing that. And then the 22nd clock, they're, they're making more of an emphasis on that. So. Pitchers can't just step off like they did last year and kind of fake a throw. You can do that one time per batter. But now you've got to start your wind up or in your set position, you've got to be delivering the ball in under 20 seconds, which I don't really know how uh, that's going to go. Um, the reason I haven't put a clock up uh, in the outfield with the 20 second clock is because if that thing goes to zero, they're going to call it. But if there's nothing out there, then there's at least a chance that they might give you a second, you know, if they're on a watch. So those are the two biggest things. Um, they're trying to speed up the pace of play, just like Major League Baseball. But um, as of right now, we can still shift. Anything else for Coach? Thank you, guys. Thank you.